At our coming, we had found an old-fashioned country neighborhood, the people living in peace. We left it with homes, fields, and forests marred, shattered, devastated, and ruined. More than 400 Minnesotans fought at the Battle of Antietam near Sharpsburg, Maryland on September 17, 1862, the bloodiest single day of any war in American history. Today, thousands of visitors annually retrace the steps of Civil War soldiers. Antietam National Battlefield is one of the most pristine battlefields in the National Park Service inventory. You can go out and behold the battlefield and see it the way it looked 150 years ago. Eighteen months into the Civil War, this is the first time Confederate forces invade the North. Farms and factories in the South have been badly damaged, and Lee desperately needs to resupply his army. The Confederates have established a 1,000-mile front from Chesapeake Bay to the Mississippi River. If Lee plays his cards right, Maryland could become a star on the Confederate flag. President Lincoln leaves nothing to chance. He has suspended the writ of habeas corpus, meaning that criminal suspects can be held without being charged, and prevented the state's legislature from meeting. Looking backwards over our shoulders, he's the great emancipator. But if you look at a map, you know why Abraham Lincoln is treading so heavily on the people of Maryland. And that's because if Maryland falls, Washington falls. The 1st Minnesota Volunteer Infantry is part of the 2nd Corps. Under the command of Colonel Alfred Sully, it is organized into 10 companies, along with the 2nd Minnesota Sharpshooters. Minnesotans have been the first to volunteer for the Union Army, and by now, they are battle-tested. Up early the morning of September 17, 1862, they will cross Antietam Creek, a cornfield, and a major crossroads before encountering the Confederates in the West Woods. The 1st Minnesota Infantry is moving closer and closer to the fight. Now they emerge on what would have been an awesome, bloody scene on the morning of the battle. The dead and wounded lay thick, many begging us for a drink of water, others telling us not to tread on them. And it was difficult to march over the ground without stepping on some man. In the space of four hours in this field here, 8,000 casualties. We're at the western edge of the cornfield. The regiment is still in a line moving towards the west woods. They're going to hit the Hagerstown Pike. This is one of the most famous fences in the Civil War. There's many pictures by Alexander Gardner of the Louisiana soldiers tangled up in this fence. Sully finally leads the regiment into the west woods. It is about this time that Lee's reserves begin to hit the 1st Minnesota hard, and the men begin to fall in the Confederate fire. The man to my right gave a quick oh and dropped his hands onto the part of his body that had been hit. But dropping his gun, he was able to limp to the rear, and a splinter from the rail of my fence hitting me in the face said, you're next. The West Woods was the furthest advance for the 1st Minnesota before the order to retreat and regroup. They're retreating through these series of rock ledges and fences back towards the North Woods part of the battlefield. When we were only about halfway up the slight rise of ground over which we were retreating, Sully gave the order to face and fire with the result that a solid volley from about 300 muskets poured into the following enemy and caused a quite appreciable check to their oncoming. The single day's battle resulted in more than 23,000 casualties with heavy losses on both sides. If the horrors of war cannot be seen on this battlefield, they can't be seen anywhere. Charlie Goddard spoke for thousands of men who fought at this place. The 1st Minnesota brought 435 men to this battlefield. 17 were killed, 79 were wounded, and 24 were missing. That's over one in four men who never made it out of here intact. At a terrific cost, Lee's invasion of the North had failed. His army retreated to southern soil. 
After waiting months for a Union victory, Lincoln used the opportunity to issue a preliminary version of the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22, 1862. 150 years later, Minnesotans continue to remember the men who fought at Antietam. Edmund Samper enlisted as a private on September 30th, 1861. He was killed in the cornfield. We have to, as the citizens of our state, do everything that we can to make sure that we're preserving these grave sites and gravestones so future generations can be reminded, can remember, and then they can interpret this for themselves. When we talk about decisive battles and turning points in the war, Antietam was near the top of the list because for the first time, freedom becomes an objective of the war.